We're back here in the North Shore Drive podcast. We took a day during the weekend to think about how bad the Steelers have been. And we're going to talk about what's the reality of Mike Tomlin being fired, traded, or kept on the coaching staff next season. I talked about that with Ray Fittipaldo, as well as how bad is the Steelers quarterback situation right now compared to a lot of other NFL teams that are winning with backup quarterbacks and how hurt up is the defense? Can it recover with all the injuries it's it's suffered? We'll discover. We'll discuss all of that here on the, the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive podcast, a show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, hosted by Christopher Carter. Hello and welcome to the North Shore Drive podcast. I am your host here, Chris Carter. He's Ray Fittipato. We're both of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Get all of our written work at post-gazette.com. Find all of our podcasts on your favorite podcasting apps at Post-Gazette Sports, as well as on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel to get all of the daily content that comes out from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and all of our different sports writers covering all things Pittsburgh sports. But the North Shore Drive podcast comes out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes on Saturdays if the game is on Sunday. Uh, as always, this show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. When, you, when you're going to the North Shore, it's the best place to visit if you're not going to a, to a game itself. Mike's Beer Bar is, is right on Federal Street across the street from PNC Park. has over 20 televisions to catch out, catch whatever sporting events you want on TV. You can even reserve those televisions uh, with a table so that you and your friends can enjoy your favorite game. And they have over 500 different available beers, 300 of those beers being local, 80 of those local beers being available on tap. More on them later. Ray... We got. We, we we're gonna talk about how bad the Steelers were in the Colts game. That that that's coming at some point. But I think the paramount discussion, the thing that everyone is looking at, is what happens with the coaching situation in Pittsburgh. Because clearly, whether or not the scheme is working or not working, there is an effort issue right now, and it has been consistent with 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 uh, over over the past three games, and that's led them from falling to, from from falling from seven and four to seven and seven and now far out of the playoff race with what looks like they're going to need help even if they win out to end, right. to end the season if they want to even make the playoffs and winning out winning one game right now seems like a, a mountain hill a mountain to climb for the, for this team but let's bring that back to mike tomlin and what the, the future is here there are some in this in this town that are calling for him to be fired some say maybe he should be traded but what is the reality here that you see for the Steelers? This is an organization that's prided itself on having three coaches since 1969 and, you know, and the history that, that they've had. And Mike Tomlin does have one more year on his contract. Do you foresee the Steelers making a move? If they, even if the worst comes to the worst, they lose out, they finish with their first losing record uh, since 2003 under Bill Cowher. Right. Is, is this a year where you see Mike Tomlin getting fired or traded away at the end of the season? You know, uh, Chris, you brought up a good point. Um, you know, I, I think ownership, um, you know, is understanding of injuries and how that impacts, um, you know, teams, especially late in the season. And the Steelers are certainly going through that. Um, it's not an excuse because, you know, let's be truthful. The, the, the Colts were playing with third and fourth string running backs. They lost their best receiver and they didn't have their quarterback either. So, um it's not an excuse, but the Steelers are really leaking in the middle of their defense. Um, now, having said that, I, I think something that ownership has been paying attention to, and that's why I think these final three games are so big, it's that effort that you talked about, right? I mean, um, Deontay Johnson not giving effort in Cincinnati. Um, luckily, the Steelers uh, came back and won that game. Consistently, George Pickens yeah. hasn't given an effort the, the last – I mean, it, it's been almost a season-long thing, but really in the second half of the season, there are embarrassing things that, that go on that uh, should never happen on a football field, um, just standing around, um, not trying. Those are the things that I think ownership um, has noticed, and they're going to see if that um, gets fixed over the final three weeks of the season. Um because that's a totally different issue. I don't know if we've ever seen that with Mike Tomlin um, coach teams in the past. Yeah, I mean, A.B. was here, and, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. But 
like with AB, there was always effort on the field, right? And this is something yeah. that, that, that's totally different. So I know I'm not answering your questions. I, I do think the last three games of the season will play into that decision. I don't think they're they're there yet. I think it's impossible for ownership not to be contemplating certain scenarios and how they might feel, you know, on January 8th or January 9th. But I, I do think these last three games and – specifically how these players respond to Mike Tomlin will be closely watched by the Rooney family. I, I feel you on that. And I, I think that's part of why I just don't see the Steelers letting go of Mike Tomlin at the end of the season, not because of Shooter Wood or anything like that. I think that you're right. Like this, they're going to give him a chance to build back. Now here's the thing is if they do lose out, I don't think he gets an extension. And that's the, I think that's where the real decision is right now from the Rooney's because and I've said this before, you look back to how, uh, Dan Rooney handled Bill Cower at the end of the '90s when they when it when they 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 had a losing they had a seven and nine record in '98, six and ten record in in '99, and then went nine and seven and missed the playoffs in 2000, and then Cower got his extension, and you know Dan Rooney signs him, and people are saying why, and he's like, hey, uh, you know I think that he he still has the locker room, these guys still believe in him. If Mike Tomlin can show that he. Um, that that, the, that this that this this locker room can still get get up and play for him in these last three games, they might extend him, and that might be part of it. That's not a that, I think that I think that's very much in play for what's going to happen down the stretch here. But I think even if they they um they 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 lose out, I don't think he gets fired. But I do think they start they 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 start considering okay next year, Mike, you got to pull it together and you got to make this team take a step forward. Um, or we are gonna we are gonna look around, and I think that also poses an interesting question: how you handle finding an offensive coordinator in this right. situation? Uh, because if if you're an offensive coordinator and you and you say, well, you know, it'd be nice to coach for a team called the Pittsburgh Steelers that has this his, this storied franchise history, and and Mike Tomlin, who has a great track record as a as a head coach and has won a Super Bowl and all these division titles and everything. Um, but do I want to do that? For a guy that has one year left on his job and risk being out in the street next next year, that's a real question. Unless you found a way to, to to get that guy to believe, like, hey, if even if Mike Tomlin is let go, you could you could you're sticking around because we want to see your offense. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can't hire like you're like that scenario is like a head coach and waiting. I mean, then that just you know if you're going to get one of those guys, Chris, let's say Ben Johnson from Detroit, there's right. no way that that would be allowed by the NFL because, you know, Ben's going to have other opportunities to be a head coach this year. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not something that um, that I, I don't think would be feasible. So no, that that's, I mean, to me, Chris, that's the biggest issue. I don't know, like put yourself in TJ Watts shoes. Okay. If Mike Tomlin doesn't get extended, if he's a lame duck head coach and there's no con contract forthcoming, they're basically punting on the 2024 season because what offensive coordinator worth any any salt is going to take this job? Who who wants to work in the NFL with one season of security, right? I mean, I, I mean, I suppose the, the Rooney's could give him a two year contract, but then you'd be putting the new head coach in a situation where um, you know he's stuck with a. I mean, it just it doesn't. None of this makes any sense. So. You know, I, I think a lot of the stuff that's being bandied about, um, you know, the trade scenarios, you you do hear it getting louder. Um, Michael Strahan talked about it yesterday. Um, you know, he's sort of a mouthpiece for Jay Glazier. Jay mm -hmm. Glazier is a mouthpiece for Mike Tomlin. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to put two and two together there. I'm not saying it, it equals four, but these guys were never as vocal as they have been the last couple of days. So all this stuff is just food for thought here as we go into the final three weeks of the season, I'm not going to roll out a trade. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, Mike Tallman, if Mike Tallman still wants to coach um, in the NFL, okay, um, he can choose where his next destination is going to be, and he can help the, the franchise that gave him this great opportunity in 2007. He can help that franchise rebuild by getting some draft picks in return. So it's not a crazy scenario, and um, – you know, given the circumstances that we're in right now, um, I don't think it's out of the question either. I'm 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 right with you that it's it's not out of the question, um, especially if things continue on the path that they've been on. 
uh, because if the Steelers keep losing, they're going to be looking for something here. And I, I agree that I don't think an offensive coordinator would want to sign up for that. I think at that point, you're not necessarily hiring because one, no, it, it is very rare that a team hires a good offensive coordinator from another team to be a good offensive coordinator on their team. Like that's just, that's why Ben Johnson, if he's hired, it's going to be because he's going to be head coach uh, right. and, and Mike Tomlin's out of a job, but right. there could be a situation where like, if, you know, if the watch the commanders or got their coaching staff, maybe Eric B could become one of those targets uh, there. Uh, the, the, the chargers, uh, you know, they've already fired Brandon Staley with his offensive quarter, Kellen Moore be a guy that you could bring in and say, Hey, you know, would you be, would you be willing to stick around for a year as offensive coordinator? And either, you know, if this, if this team gets better, you're our OC and you you're turning around the best Steeler, the, you know, the worst Steelers offense that we've seen in many years. And then that could be something huge on your resume to get your head, ex head coaching job. Or you, if things don't turn around and you're still doing what we like, what we want you to do on offense, you become the next head coach after you. I, I think that could be a little different with guys who might be on the free agent market as coaches uh, because they're going to be, um, because they, they, their head coach, you know, is being let go here. That's where I think that there needs to be something uh, uh, along the lines of what the Steelers have to do to make a smart hire at offensive coordinator, whether or not they 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 do get rid of Mike Tomlin here. Chris, I just don't like the idea of the Steelers' ownership group hamstringing the next head coach if Mike doesn't sign an extension. And let's say your scenario, you bring on Kellen Moore. Mm -hmm. And the standard OC contracts aren't two years or three years. So right. a lot of these guys want the standard three-year deal. So then basically what you're doing is you're spending a lot of money on Kellen Moore and you're sticking to the next head coach with a guy that he may or may not be able to work with. I, You know, listen, they've done it with Tomlin. They've told Tomlin who he has to work with, who's going to be his OCs in the past. I get it, but this is a, this is a new era in the NFL. And if you really want to – get the next brightest head coach um, to come run this franchise after Tom on leaves. Um, I just don't know if you want to saddle him with, with a coordinator that uh, he may or may not be on board with. Oh, oh, my, my, my point is have a position where that coordinator becomes the next head coach. If Mike Tomlin doesn't work out and it'd be, it'd be a thing where you could get it. You could say like, Hey, like, you're the next guy if Mike Tomlin doesn't turn things around and you don't want to extend him after 2024. That and that's that, there's a lot of other things that I think are, are more likely to happen, but yeah. I do think I think that that would be a way to get one of those guys. Otherwise, if you bring in a new offensive coordinator, it's got to be a position coach like Clint Kubiak or you know, uh, you know, you know, just a, a, a quarterback coach, a pass game coordinator, yeah. someone who isn't an OC right now or doesn't have a good OC track record, uh, like Moore or B, or B enemy. And I think that's you, you at that point, like it's not as big of a risk as taking one on Matt Canada, but I think it's another risk. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, there's so many scenarios that could play out here. Just the idea that you would hire an OC who may or not be become a good head coach. I mean, listen, Kellen Moore has never been a head coach in the NFL. I suppose you could do that with a guy like Frank Reich. If you really like Frank and you think, okay, you know, things didn't work on in Carolina, there's this scenario. Maybe Frank would take that, but I, I still don't think that's the way that the Ro Rooneys operate. I, I think when it is time to find the next head coach, they want to go through that process in a detailed manner. And it's not always about um, – your ability to coordinate an offense or a defense. I mean, um, you know, the reason Mike Tomlin was hired wasn't because he was this great defensive coordinator. He was fine. They hired him because he was a really good leader, and he felt like they could. They felt like he could take this football team, um, you know, back to the Super Bowl, which obviously he did a couple of years later. So I think that leadership, being able to deal with the egos, all that stuff, is different when you're a head coach um, than when you're a coordinator, and you still have to be able to relate to these guys, but it's a whole different scenario when you're the guy in charge. I hear you on that. We're going to move on to uh, the quarterback situation that the Steelers are dealing with right now because they're not having much answers anywhere. But first, before we do any of that, I want to remind you, this show, the North Shore Drive podcast, is brought to you by, by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. We go down, go down to the North Shore, go on Federal Street. It's right across the street from, from PNC Park. Mike's Beer Bar is a gem that you can go to with over 20 televisions where you can go in, you can call ahead, reserve a table with a TV, and ask them to put on a specific game, and they'll find it for you, whether it's the most random college basketball match 
matchup out there. As long as it's on the tube, Mike will help you find it. You can also do NFL games, college football games during bowl season, Penguins games, hockey games, Premier League action, all of that available at Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. And while you're there, you're trying over 500 different available beers. 300 of those beers are local, and 80 of those local beers are available on tap. So you can always try out new things while you're there, and they're changing them out every single week to get you new options from the local area and all the different breweries that make up in the greater Pittsburgh area. They also have amazing meal options like their steak on a stone where you get your choice cut of steak brought to you on a heated stone. And every time you cut off a piece and press it into the stone, you choose how well done you want every single bite. It's the best part of Pittsburgh. I'm telling you, you got to get down to Mike's Beer Bar. So go down to Mike's Beer Bar, get your sports fix and experience the best bar in Pittsburgh. When you get there, tell them Chris sent you. We're back here on the North Shore Drive podcast. Chris Carter and Ray Fittipato of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Now, Ray, let's let's explore the offense for a second, specifically the quarterback position. Mitch Trubisky wasn't the only problem in the Steelers' offense. The offensive line was terrible. There was just bad bad effort by George Pickens. We'll get into those in just a little bit here. But I, I think there's still something to the effect that Mitch Trubisky has played has not played well since coming in to replace Kenny Pickett. Uh, he replaced him in, I believe, the Texans game, the Jaguars game, the Cardinals game, and now he started against uh, the Patriots and the Colts, and the Steelers have not won in any of those games that he's appeared in, um, and he's not looked good in any of them. And it goes beyond just – coordination the Steelers are getting open guys in the middle part of the field Pat Fryermuth open uh, you know right over the middle on a th- on a key third down and the ball sails yards away from him George Pickens at the end of the game wide open over the middle ball sails away from him for an interception uh in a play that really killed the Steelers chances at a comeback and it's just it's Mitch Trubisky can't consistently do basic things in this offense routine things routinely as Mike Tomlin likes to say and yeah. Steelers fans have to be frustrated when you're looking around the NFL or even just the AFC North. The the Joe Flacco has multiple three touchdown games for for the Cleveland Browns. I think he has three three touchdown games for the Cleveland Browns coming off the coming off his couch. Um, Jake Browning is looking like he's Joe Burrow himself uh, for for the Bengals right right now. Uh, you know Gardner Minshew just threw three touchdowns on him. What what uh, is is the Steelers are the Steelers quarterback just that? bad as far as the talent that they bring to the table or is this still just all about a scheme that they're still muddling around with even though Matt Canada is gone yeah how how much the storyline has changed since August right I mean you remember a lot of the drumbeat over the offseason Steelers have one of the best backup uh, situations in the NFL um, and they're paying him as such they're paying him eight million dollars uh, this year um, and it hasn't turned out that way um, you know, you, you mentioned Jake Browning and Joe Flacco. I, I can go around the NFL and list five more guys who, who have looked better yep. um, than the Steelers quarterbacks. Um, so I don't know what that tells you, Chris, but what that, tell, that tells me is, yes, Mitch isn't fundamentally sound. He's thrown off his back foot. He's bothered by the rush. But I still come back to the fact that if this uh, team had an NFL playbook and had a competent NFL coordinator – um, then things might be different. I, I just can't imagine that Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky would look this bad if Kevin Stefanski was their head coach or if Zach Taylor was their head coach or coordinator. I'm not saying, um, you know, being specific to head coach or coordinator. I'm just saying if they were in um, even a competent NFL offense, then I can't imagine that they would be this bad. I just, I, I refuse to believe it. So um, I think it does all come back to the scheme. That doesn't excuse Mitch for the way he played, as Mike pointed out after the game, they're not a uh, they're a poor fundamental football team, and you've seen that consistently with all the quarterbacks. Kenny's bothered by pressure; he doesn't always step up in the pocket. You know, Mitch will step up into the pocket, but he's he's thrown off his back foot. I mean, it, everything about this team is just a mess right now. I think they're poorly coached, and uh, I, I think major changes are coming, uh, not only on the coaching staff, but the way all of these quarterbacks have performed. I'm not sure. Sh- I'm not so sure that, uh, you know, two of the, these guys will be back. They can save some money by uh, 
by not bringing Mitch back. And listen, what's what's the point of bringing Mason Rudolph back? You might as well get younger at the position. Jake Browning never played an NFL game, and he looks twice as good as Mr. Trubisky does now. Yeah, I think part of that, too, is if you look at their situation with the quarterbacks, um, you know, and you could say scheme and all this, but when you get wide open guys and you're missing them consistently, like it's 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 a, it's it doesn't matter what scheme you call. If Eric Bieniemy is your offensive, if Andy Reid quit the Chiefs right now and came to the Steelers and said, hey, we're going to call these plays and you miss the wide open receivers. You're not going to win football games. You're not going to see, and, and people are going to say, "What's the problem here?" I, I think the problem is talent right now with with those guys, and they need a better scheme. They need better offensive coaches that can get them get them better. I think that Mike Sullivan hasn't done a good job teaching those fundamentals to these guys. That's why he was brought to the Steelers was to be regimented and to get these guys to get the basics down, so their technique and that was 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 better, and they improved. That clearly hasn't happened. I think they need help there in that department but i mean we're looking at it we're, we're looking at just basic things not being taken here um you know just decisions that make no sense sometimes when there are wide open guys in in the scheme and you know i think that there's 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 a lot there's a lot to that about what's what we've what we've seen even when kenny pickett was struggling at times this year there, there were times where it's like hey this that that this was not the play that you were supposed to make here. This was not the throw that you were supposed to be looking at. This guy was schemed open in the middle part of the field, no one around him, and you're not even looking in the right direction. And again, it's not all on the quarterbacks all the time. The offensive line was putrid on on Saturday, and there was no and there's no excuse for guys like Dan Moore, Mason Cole, even Broderick Jones at times had some had some rough goes at it. Um, you know, I think that there's that, that they need to improve too, but. This team needs talent at the quarterback in the worst way right now. And I think part of what you said, a younger quarterback, a guy that can have um, that, that that could come in and maybe just boost things. The Steelers, I don't think need, uh, can afford to ignore quarterback in the draft. This year. I'm not saying first round, but at some point, maybe in the, on day two with a second or a third round pick. Looking, looking at some of the quarterbacks that are sitting in the draft, the guys that are athletic, guys that can run, that can run with the football and throw the football, um, guys that can say, "Hey, you know what? If Kenny Pickett's out, give me a chance, and maybe I could surprise you." The way that Brock Purdy surprised uh, the, the 49ers, and the way that other teams, you know, that Jake Browning is surprising the Bengals right now. The way that a lot of teams are getting backup quarterback play and not feeling bad about it, the way the Steelers are right now, um, and it, it's crazy because just a few years ago. I felt like the Steelers kind of worked their way out of being in that position because whenever Landry Jones came in, that was that was rough. The Steelers were just in a rough spot. But then for a little bit there, you thought, hey, Mason Rudolph's not, not, not that bad. And then he kind of got worse. But then you were able to kind of handle the backup quarterback situation a little bit better than you did in, in those days. Um, you thought that might be changing. And now all of that is completely gone, even when you went and got a guy who, when he was on the free agency market, Tr Mitch Trubisky, he was one of the top backup quarterbacks on that market as far as who everyone was looking at. Yeah, I mean, Chris, there might be eight out of the 32 teams who think they have a quote-unquote franchise quarterback. I think the other 24 teams in the league should be drafting a guy almost every year because you never know. You brought up Brock, Brock Purdy. You never know when a guy like Brock never Purdy know. is going to come along. And if you have good coaches, that certainly makes your, your hit rate on quarterbacks – um, increase for sure. So the Steelers are certainly in that spot. So whether they they're going to give Kenny Pickett another year or not, I, I think they certainly are. Um, but yeah, maybe not. Hey, maybe you take a flyer on a guy in the second or third round, or maybe fourth or fifth round. Just you know, say hey, maybe maybe this guy will come in. He'll he'll get coached up and he'll be better. And maybe you d develop a backup at the very best. But uh, I'm of the school of thought if you don't have a franchise quarterback. You should constantly be in search of them. I, I'm with you there. Two other examples of guys taken on day two of the draft when there's been another quarterback in place. Uh, Russell Wilson was taken in the third round when the, the Seahawks had just signed Matt Flynn to be their guy. They signed him to like a $13 million contract, and they thought he was the starting quarterback. Then Russell Wilson became Russell Wilson and won them a Super Bowl. Uh, and also Kirk Cousins was drafted in the third round when they already had RG3. And at the time, everyone thought RG3 was the future of the NFL. Then Kirk Cousins became Kirk Cousins uh, and uh, you, you know brought them their most relevant years for, for, for Washington that they've had in, in, in quite some time. And now he's been pretty good for the for the Vikings, too. Just saying, uh, to Ray's point, if you don't have if you don't know if you have a franchise quarterback, it is it is worth taking multiple shots at it, because if you get it right one time, you're set for 10 to 15 years, and that can give you such a lot more stability. 
uh, in the NFL. But the defense also needs to be needs to be talked about. We'll talk about that on the other side of the break here on the North Shore Drive podcast. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Savinas Kane and Gallucci, their mesothelioma and asbestos lawyers with over 85 years of experience. Call them now for a free consultation at Savinas Kane and Gallucci. We're also brought to you by GameTime.co, where buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events new you. You can buy tickets to, to your favorite events all around town, wherever wherever you want to go to. And when you're getting tickets at game time, you know you're always getting the best price and you're not getting scammed out, out of your tickets. So if you're ever running late to an event and you don't have tickets or you're getting something and you're thinking, oh, I'll wait for the best deal at the last at the last minute, that can sometimes backfire if you're relying on scalpers because you might see a, a person on the street sell you a ticket and then you get inside and you're like, these tickets are terrible. These I can't see nothing from these seats. Well, in game time, you'll always see the view from your seats. You'll always be able to see what what you know, what kind of tickets that you're getting. And they're making sure that you get the best price for those tickets. And they tell you, hey, if you find a, a, a ticket in the same section and row in, in your row for less somewhere else on a different and a different app website or app, game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference on those prices uh, from their from their price snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code pitt pit for twenty dollars off your first purchase or go to their website gametime.co term and conditions apply create an account and redeem code pitt pit for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed We're back here in the North Shore Drive podcast. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato, talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've talked about the offense a bit. We've talked about the, about the coaching situation. Let's talk about the defense. And uh, whew, um, listen, I know there are some people out there saying Terrell Austin should be on the chopping block, and I'm not saying that he that he should be completely dismissed uh, from being in, in those discussions. Um, the defense hasn't been great, but they're still right now as of as of this ever us recording this episode, they are still in the top 10 in scoring defense in the NFL this, this year. Um, and they are still dealing with some high level injuries. And I know you said, well, everyone's dealing with injuries, right? But it's different when you're dealing with one backup quarterback and you still had, you know, a, your, your top backup running back versus you're on your fifth option at, at inside your fourth, your fifth option at safety, your fourth and fifth option at linebacker. And at one point in this game, you had Miles Killebrew and Patrick Peterson as your only available safety. Peterson, not a safety. He's a corner, he's a cornerback. And when you're trying, when you're talking about the makeup of a defense, if I, if I, if I'm missing one, if I'm missing a running back, we've seen the Steelers win with fourth and fifth string running backs uh, before in, in, in prior years, we've seen, we've seen them be able to pull that off in playoff games. E even, I, I think it's different when you're talking about the makeup of a defense, the middle of the field is comprised of your off ball linebackers and your safeties. And you have one starter available to you. And, you know, and, and Landon Roberts was the third starter of their three of their three linebackers that they had signed this, this year. And then you have practice squad guys and seventh round picks uh, and guys moving from other positions to fill there. And that's where I look at that. And I say, like, man, I'm not so sure the defense is more so about changing up who's calling the plays there or who's scheming things up as right. much as this group is just depleted right now. And it's tough to find any answers with who they've got. Yeah, I mean, let's first off, let's talk about Landon Roberts because he he was signed to a two year deal, Chris, and I'm 100 percent bringing him back. I, Absolutely, I really good football player. He's he's a guy that you want on your football team. He's when Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander went down, that guy stepped up and elevated his game. So to me, he's a lock. Now, when you're talking about the inside linebacker position beyond him for 2024, that Holcomb injury. Chris, I don't know that he's going to be ready um, for the start of the season. Do you want to bring Quan Alexander back when, yeah, he's a good player, but he's injured um, probably more than he's healthy and he's he's getting older. So then you got to look at, okay, are we going to go out and sign another guy um, to a contract like we did for Cole Holcomb or are we going to invest in the draft? So to me, that's the way I'm approaching uh, the 2024 season. It's, it's a huge off season. Um, to address that middle. And I didn't think they were going to have to address it again. I thought they were they were set after what they did this year. But, um, hey, injuries injuries take a toll. Uh, now, the safety position, kind of a weird situation with KZ yeah. getting ejected. We're, we're probably not going to get into that today. But 
Um, you know, the NFL probably has to institute replay and have New York look at these things because I, I, I just don't think an on-field official – I think the, the game's moving too fast for these guys. The, these are part-time – uh, people, you know, they're insurance salesmen during the week, and yep. we're asking them to to sometimes um, decide the fate of games, <laughs> decide the fate of games, and who makes the playoffs and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. Get New York involved; they're involved in ninety percent of the other things they, you know, that we have in replay. So just get them involved too. Um, but again, Chris, depth of safety beyond Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, who do you feel comfortable uh, with coming back in 2024? Casey's a nice backup. I don't know that he's a starter. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought Keon O'Neill was solid. He's, you know, he's on a two year deal. He's making like 2 million a year. I'll bring him back. But again, it's more of the same with like with Quan Alexander, how, how healthy is this guy going to be as he ages? So um, I, I'm not going to be the guy that uses injuries as an excuse um, I think everyone goes through them. They just have to build better depth. And I think given the direction that, that this season is going, and honestly, the, the way this has been evolving over five years, get younger, develop yeah, guys. You know, the Quan Alexanders, that's fine if you have to fill in a hole or two, but go out and identify guys in the draft or young free agents that you can grow with who will be a part of this team for four or five years. I'm, I don't – I don't have nothing against Quan Alexander, but um, we need to start thinking about the future at both of those positions, and they got to build better, better quality depth than what they have right now. And, and look, I think that the draft can be a place there where you get a young guy to come in and could work at either position. Uh, you know, you could you could keep around Keanu Neal. You have Minka Fitzpatrick, and if you drafted a safety, you know, maybe in the middle rounds. You know, where you can say, hey, you know, you're going to come in, you're going to learn and you're going to you're going to be kind of told where to go from these guys. But we're expecting you to make plays. I could see that happening. And then also drafting a linebacker shouldn't be off the table, uh, you know, or signing a really young one who you think could be promising because you, you keep Holcomb, you keep you say you keep Roberts and maybe even keep Alexander and then have him be your fourth guy. And that guy can learn there and also be a better option, because let's also face it. I think Michael Walker did as well as he uh, has done as well as he can. Uh, coming off coming off the practice squad, coming off the couch to the practice squad to then right. start in several games for the Steelers right. and, and help them out. I think he's made some some solid plays. I think he's helped as best he can, but he's out there because two other guys are out for the season yeah. uh, and, and, and the situation. I also think Mark Robinson, if if the play is running right at him and it's mano y mano with the running back in the hole, you love Mark Robinson. But if it's not that exact scenario, you're in a lot of trouble because I looked at this game and there were several times where the run was going one way, Mark Robinson was going the other. And I'm like, oh boy. And then you see the reluctance is why they went and got Michael Walker because Mark Robinson just isn't that guy. And look, Mark Robinson, we always knew he's a project. That's why he's a seventh round pick. Most seven round picks don't even make the NFL. Um, But at the same time, you, you didn't you didn't expect to have to use those guys. I think next year, I'm right with you. Bring back Elaine Roberts. I'd also bring back Quan Alexander, but depending on his health, can he be healthy for the start of training camp? But go get a younger guy that can be among them, so that when if if and when they face these injury situations again, they have a better option who could not just be a temporary fix, but a part of your future after those guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the Steelers are a draft. And developed team. They've just been in a situation at inside linebacker where they felt like they've had to go outside the organization to, to sign free agents. But, um, you know, Devin Bush didn't work out. You can't be scared off because one draft pick didn't work out. Go out and get another young guy. Doesn't have to be in the first round, Chris. I know inside linebackers are, are, are tough to evaluate. Get a guy in the second, third, fourth round, somebody you can develop and let him grow within that defense. He doesn't have to start right away, but again, get him in the system, get him so he's ready next season in case there are injuries again. Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of questions as far as what the Steelers do uh, with their coaching staff, with their defense, with their offense. And, and frankly, as we continue, as we've continued down this season, I think the needs for the, the Steelers, have, the, the list of needs has grown here. And that's where we're going to keep exploring as we, as we see the end of this season, three more games for the Steelers sitting at seven and seven. They still technically could win out and, and be a playoff team. 
but it don't look like that's happened with the way that they've played. But Mike Tomlin speaks at noon on Monday. We'll be there covering it from UPMC Rooney Sports Complex, getting you ready for the Steelers' upcoming matchup, the final home game of the season against the Cincinnati Bengals in what is a must-win game for the Steelers this season. We'll get you prepared for that all season long here on the North Shore Drive podcast and at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Go to post-gazette.com to get all of our written work. Subscribe there to get all the great work we do at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Find this show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on Saturdays, the North Shore Drive podcast on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this channel for all the daily content we bring you here. From Chris Carter and Ray Fedpato, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again Wednesday when I'm joined by Brian Batko and we get to get you updated throughout the week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all the sports coverage from the Post-Gazette that we have to offer, visit post-gazette.com.